10 facts about Galaxy Edge you probably didn't know. Star Wars Galaxy Edge was by far the most immersive zone in any Disney park when it opened in 2009 at Disneyland and Walt Disney World. Seeing the Millennium Falcon for the very first time, rubbing shoulders with stormtroopers, and finally discovering what blue milk tastes like might be overpowering, making it easy to overlook some of the land's lesser known details and secrets. Travel Plus Leisure got a first peek at a new book on the development of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and spoke with two Disney cast members who worked on the project closely to unearth the secrets you need to know about for your next visit. But before we start, make sure to smash the like and subscribe button. Let's roll into Disneyland fun! Number 10. Harry Potter Roots Disney does not claim Universal's The Wizarding World of Harry Potter as the inspiration for creating a Star Wars-themed zone. Instead, Imagineers point to Cars Land as a forerunner. On the other hand, Disney can't disguise the fact that they engaged former Universal creative boss Scott Trowbridge to create Galaxy's Edge. Trowbridge created the amazing adventures of Spider-Man, Revenge of the Mummy, as well as the Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey dark ride for Universal. Though Disney would not acknowledge it, the revolutionary Harry Potter attraction played a significant effect in the development of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Number 9. The design team traveled around the world for inspiration. Imagineers traveled all around the world in search of inspiration for the Black Spire Outpost. They visited open-air markets in Morocco, Istanbul, Turkey, and Greece taking images of everything from street market products to architecture and sidewalk cracks. In Amy Ratcliffe's book, The Art of Star Wars Galaxy Edge, Walt Disney Imagineering Portfolio Creative Executive Scott Trowbridge stated, These excursions are critical for us because we are creating in the world and want our work to be credible. There is no replacement for visiting locations that evoke what we wish to build. Number 8. There is a very good reason they create a new planet for Disney. Like the rest of Hollywood Studios, Galaxy's Edge is designed to allow guests to create their own journey. When it came to deciding where to establish the land, Imagineers had a variety of galaxies to pick from. But they instead invented a fresh, new one. It was our intention for this to be your Star Wars tale, not Luke's, Han's, or any other Star Wars character story. Scott Malwitz, Executive Creative Director of Walt Disney Imagineering, told Travel Plus Leisure, It moves you away from attempting to follow a pre-existing plot and towards living out your own story with your family and friends. By introducing a new location inside the Star Wars universe, both longtime fans and newbies to the franchise will be able to visit a completely undiscovered planet. Whatever your starting place, there's a whole new universe waiting to be discovered. We're hoping that for those people who have never experienced Star Wars, the territory itself will be the source of motivation and their way into Star Wars," Malwitz added. Number 7. You can use your phone to dive even deeper into the story. The Play Disney Parks app has been available since 2018, but the launch of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge is the first time a Disney area has been designed to interface with the app properly. Inside the land, you may turn your phone into a data pad, allowing you to hack into droids or door panels, scan the inside of different cargo boxes, decode Arabesh messages, and listen in on characters' conversations. There's a lot of things in there that we don't talk about or name out loud that elevate your journey to the next level," Malwitz explained. Number 6. The planet of Batu has a long and mysterious past. Despite the fact that Star Wars Galaxy's Edge is set in the most current Star Wars trilogy, the area was developed and built with a history reaching back hundreds, if not thousands of years. Massive decaying tree trunks dot the area, indicating that an old forest once thrived where the Black Spire outpost currently thrives. There are additional hints to the planet's history as well. You may observe wall carvings and navigational maps that seem to have been the underground tunnels from ancient times while waiting in line for Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. Malwitz revealed, because the land is outside of the Star Wars universe, we had to create our own history and mythology. 
It is on purpose that not everything on the globe is from the same era. Number 5. Nobody knows why the black spire is black. A single petrified tree in the village's center, darker than the rest, adds to the land's secrets. The outpost was named for its black spire, but its origins are unknown. According to Jackie Swisher, vice president of DC's Hollywood Studios, the reason it's black is a mystery. Something has certainly occurred here, but we don't know what it is. See if you can discover the black spire and the young tree growing in the same area on your next visit. Another sign of Patu's union of old and new. Comment down below if you're excited for this one. Number 4. The land and its attraction had fun codenames when they were being built. Disney makes every effort to keep new projects under wraps. In the art of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, we learned that when Galaxy's Edge was being developed, the region was known as Delos, a Greek island visited by the designers when looking for inspiration for the land. Big Bird was the name given to the Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, while Alcatraz was given to Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. Apparently, it is a first-order prison out of which riders must escape. Number 3. It's the only place to see a full-sized Millennium Falcon. It might come as a shock, but a full-sized Millennium Falcon was never created before Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. The models used in the movie have either been scaled, computer-generated, or just partially made to meet the needs of the filming. The more than 100-foot-long replicas at Walt Disney World and Disneyland are the only two full-sized Falcons. And they are meticulously detailed. Number 2. The DJ in Oga's Cantina had a prior job at Disney. Oga Gara may own Oga's Cantina, the neighborhood hangout at Galaxy's Edge, but DJ R3X or DJ Rex provides the amusement. He spins a series of cosmic bops behind the turntables. But DJ is not his first profession. DJ R3X was a Star Tours pilot droid before authorities changed it to Star Tours The Adventure Continues. According to legend, he made his way to the Rebel Alliance and crashed and landed on Batu. Paul Rubens provides the voice for DJ R3X. Number 1. There's a good luck charm in the land. This one is going to be fun. The enormous open-air marketplace is one of the centerpieces of Star Wars Galaxy Edge. Different stalls sell toys, clothing, and other items one might expect to discover on an unearthly shopping spree. A massive obelisk stands at the country's entrance, and it, like many other things in the area, has a fascinating background. Imagineering managing story editor Margaret Carrison is quoted in The Art of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge as stating, If you touch it and say, Till the Spire, then it grants you good luck so that you may return in good health to this location again. I can't wait to put that one to the test. So, did you know these facts before watching this video? After watching this video, you might enjoy your trip to Disneyland even more. If you like the video, make sure to smash the like, share, and subscribe button. Thanks for watching.